Alright, so now I'm going to show you the cleaning method using uh, tubes. Still using sand of course, but we're going to use a tube method and put our bees inside the tube for cleaning. And uh, first of all I'm going to go through all the different pieces of equipment that we have here and uh, the condos and how to extract the cocoons and then we'll get our sand and clean it from there. Alright, so we have a variety of, of uh, condos here. We've got some that we can take apart. And with these ones here, you just undo these nuts and pull the trays out that way. And there's some of the cocoons there that need cleaning. Here's uh, another couple condos uh, full of uh, cocoons and a bunch more trays here. So I'm going to be pulling all the uh, cocoons out of that, those with the uh, extractor tool here. And then I'm going to be doing a pre-sieve and a coarse sieve here. And then I'm going to be introducing into this tube. And I've got a couple of different tubes here. I got the clear one um, as the photos show on the website. On my website, uh, Hutchings Bee Service. And then there's also the, the big commercial one. We can put a, quite a few in there. And then after that we'll pour them out into the fine sieve. And... Uh, get rid of the fine stuff and then we'll put our cocoons when we're done into our emerging our emerging box okay I'll just take this first one here take it apart just going to scrape right out into this pre sieve first. I'm just breaking apart all the mud between each cell. I don't care what's in the cells, I don't care if there's living bees, dead bees, mites, empty mud and all right into this chamber here. Being careful not to uh, cut the cocoons. I've done this a number of times, so I sort of know when it's harmful or not. Remember, there's living bees in here. They're just dormant, laying diapause over the winter months, ready to come out here in uh, around our area on Vancouver Island. It's going to be around late February, early March. So, just carrying on. So you get the idea. Gets uh, rid of most of the worst stuff with the coarse sieve uh, container here. I'm just going to put in a, just a small amount. In this small container, just for, for the purposes of seeing it, I'm going to put in maybe that much. Then I'm going to put in some clean sand, put in, I don't know, a quarter of a cup or so. I'll put the two halves together. And you can see them inside there. So now I'm just going to tip them up and down. And the sand's going to run past each cocoon brushing or scouring off any mites that might be on there. Any other stuff is, uh, such as frass or old discarded pollen that didn't make it because the larvae was, was killed or died from something. It's just all going to mix in with the sand. I won't reuse this sand for the next clean, for the next batch. I'll get clean sand each time. So I'm just going to pass it through here a number of times. Probably pretty good there. So 
now I'm just going to pour out the contents into the fine sieve. I can, I can put the sand in here as well. And I'll put it into a container to save the sand. Final shake, and you're left with nice clean cocoons with a few lumps of uh, mud that you can pick out later. It really doesn't matter, it's not going to affect anything. So you can pick them out if you want, but when you're doing a lot of these, you just want to get the clean cocoons. And I'll put them in this emergent box, and that's where the bees will come out. And this whole box will go in with, say, a the bee barn system for a commercial pollinator this is a little bigger box. If you had a backyard one, you'd have a smaller uh, emergent uh, chamber. All right. So quite a few people ask me about um, how to clean your condo trays afterwards. In this particular model, it's got a clear cover. I would take the cover right off and I would wash it and I would tape it back on. As far as the channels themselves, um, after cleaning it, you can use a a wire brush on it so you can actually brush the, the thing right out. You can wash it as well and if you really want to go an extra step, uh, you, you know, you don't have to do this but I'll even torch it to just really make sure I, I burn out any uh, mold spores if I can or any um, uh, eggs of mites or what have you. You can do that if you want. You compromise your longevity of your wooden uh, construction uh, trays however. And now the other thing that people ask me about is the tool. So extracting tool, it, it was a large putty knife about you know this width and I just ground it down to, is I took a flex, more flexible one so and it fits the, the channel width perfectly for cutting it. That's um, if it's a flat bottom one. Uh, these are flat bottom datoed. Uh, if they're the round routed out ones, we have a curved one for that. I happen to choose uh, square bottom dado uh, trays here today. And the tube itself for putting the bees in, in the sand, they've just got these screen meshes of which I've siliconed in part way through. And it's a coarse uh, screen, so no cocoons are going to get through, but it allows ample amount of sand to, uh, to uh, go right through there. And you can control that amount of uh, sand going by with the amount of sand you put in or how many cocoons you pack in because it'll get constricted as the sand tries to go by so you can end up shaking it, you can roll it, you can just do it a lot more times if you want to. And you can also just check your mites uh, under the microscope if you want. Check the cocoon state and see if there's any mites in it. The old sand I'm going to put on a wood stove and I'm going to cook it and you can wash it if you want. I just cook it and then I put it back into the clean jar uh, ready for next year, but I've got lots of sand to keep me going for the rest of the uh, cleaning season here.